Now we'll learn how identities like a plus b whole square equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square and identity like a minus b whole square equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square and one more which is a square minus b square equal to a minus b into a plus b can be derived. So now let's talk about the first identity which is a plus b whole square. We'll start from the left hand side and try to reach towards the right hand side of the identity. So what is the left hand side? Left hand side is a plus b whole square. So let's start from here. What is the meaning of a plus b whole square? a plus b whole square is actually equal to a plus b multiplied to itself. Okay. So how we multiply? While multiplying two expressions, here the two expressions are a plus b and a plus b. So while multiplying what we do, we take the first term of the first expression and then we multiply it to the first term of the second expression. And then again we take first term of the first expression and then we multiply it to the second term of the second expression. And if we have more than two terms, we have to continue this procedure. Okay. Then we start with the second term of the first expression and repeat the procedure. We multiply the second term of the first expression to the first term of the second expression and then we multiply the second term of the first ex expression to the second term of the second expression and if we have more terms we have to repeat this procedure. Okay, so let's write what we'll get by doing this procedure it will be equal to first a will get multiplied to a which will be a multiplied by a then we have a plus sign why because this b is positive a is getting multiplied to b so we will get a b and now since there were only two terms in the second expression we will start with the second term of the first expression that is b. We will multiply this b by the first term of the second expression which is a. b multiplied by a is b a and we write it in alphabetical order that will be a b and then b will get multiplied to b that is the second term of the first expression and the second term of the second expression both are b. b multiplied by b is like this. Now let us solve this further. a multiplied by a is a square. ab and ab there are two ab's so plus 2ab and then we have plus b multiplied by b that is b square. So it is plus b square. So what is the value of a plus b whole square? a plus b whole square is actually equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. 
so this was the derivation of our first identity which says a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square okay now let's talk about the second identity second identity is this which says a minus b whole square is equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square so what I'll do I'll write the left hand side of the expression here the left hand side of the expression is a minus b whole square okay so what is the meaning of a minus b whole square a minus b whole square is nothing but a minus b multiplied by itself that is a minus b a minus b whole square is nothing but a minus b multiplied by a minus b again we have to repeat the procedure of multiplication this a will get multiplied by this a first and then it will get multiplied to this b so this will give us a multiplied by a is a square this time I am writing directly okay and then this a multiplied by minus b so it will be minus a b why this minus sign in multiplication if minus get multiplied by minus we'll get a positive term if plus gets multiplied by plus then also we get a positive term but if a minus gets multiplied by plus or a plus gets multiplied by minus we will get a minus term this we have learnt in the video where I am explaining you how to multiply two algebraic expressions. You can refer that video. Okay. So since this is there, so next term what we have to do? We have to, since this A has got multiplied by both the terms of the second bracket, now we have to start with this minus B this minus b will get multiplied by a first and then it will get multiplied by this b so minus b getting multiplied by a will be minus a b actually it will be minus b a but we always write variables in alphabetical order so it will be written as minus a b then minus b gets multiplied by b so minus minus plus so this term will be plus b square now let us solve it further a square can be written as it is minus ab minus ab are two negative ab's that is minus 2ab and then we have this b square So this was the formula for a minus b whole square. So this was our second identity which says a minus b whole square is equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square. So now let's check a third identity which needs to be proven. The third identity was a square minus b square is equal to a minus b multiplied by a plus b. Let me write down this third identity. 
here it says a square minus b square is equal to a minus b multiplied by a plus b in this case we'll start from the right hand side so what is right hand side right hand side is a minus b multiplied by a plus b now let's repeat the procedure of multiplication first we'll multiply this a to this a and then we multiply that a to this b so it will be equal to a multiplied by a is equal to a square and a multiplied to plus b it will be plus a b and then we have this minus b multiplied to a and then this minus b multiplied to this b so minus b multiplied to a will be minus b a and we have to write in alphabetical order that is minus a b and minus b multiplied to plus b will be minus b square now if we look at this expression carefully we have one plus a b and we have one minus a b so positive negative same term will get cancelled out and we'll have a square minus b square which is nothing but the left hand side of the identity so we have prove this identity these all these are very important identities now let me write this identity again it says a square minus b square is equal to a minus b multiplied by a plus b so we have learnt three identities this was the third one a a square minus b square is equal to a minus b multiplied by a plus b all these identities which we have learnt they are very useful in solving algebraic problems these were the identities the first one then this was the second one and this was the third one so these are the three identities and these come very handy when we solve algebraic problems so i will expect you to remember all this and you should also see few more videos which where i have explained these identities using geometrical figures they are very interesting methods and and if you see those videos you will remember these identities better